Welcome to another great edition of Beacons of Light where we really show how our faith lives really nourish our souls and put us in a position to bring the bright light of Christ to those in need. Uh, joining me today is Craig Borlinghouse and Glenn Phillips of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, Knights of Columbus. Yes, Welcome, sir. gentlemen. Right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well, uh, Mount Carmel and St. Uh, Francisville is such a beautiful, beautiful church. And uh, I, I know that the Knights are very active and a vital part of the parish. And right. y'all do so many things. And I know, Glenn, you joined in 1960, huh? I did, right out of high school. It, it was easy to do. The, the um, Knights Hall was about a block and a half from my home. And I was told, as soon as you turn 18, you'll become a member of the Knights of Columbus. And that's what I did. And I've been a member ever since. And, and many different councils across the state of Louisiana, my wife and I traveled a lot in our yeah. job, my job. Yeah. So um, I've learned a lot about what the Knights are all about, and that is charity and have been able to express that principle many, many times in many various different ways in helping people in need. Well, you know, y'all do so many charitable things at Our Lady of Mount Carmel, the nights there, and what are some of the charitable activities you do? Well, as I mentioned, during the pandemic, and uh, we focused our resources on our parish uh, food pantries, both yes. in West Felicia and Parish, East Felicia and Parish. And, and let me mention our, our Knights of Columbus Council also includes Our Lady of Perpetual Help Church in Jackson. Yes, sir. So we have members from that church as well. So whatever we do in West Felicia, we try to do also in East Felicia to serve the people who need our help. So we, we provided uh, monetary donations to the food pantries. We volunteered at the food pantry. And uh, whatever came up from Baton Rouge, the food bank, we, you know, we put it in boxes and we distributed it on Thursdays. So that, that's a wonderful experience for anybody to participate in. Um, there was no, at the time, you know, the vaccines weren't out there. No. Y'all were doing what was necessary, staying safe, but making sure that that charitable work continued, right? That's correct. We also supported our Council on Aging. Great. And, and both parishes, and the elderly, and their need for food and, and uh, support. So, Greg, you think anything else that we were? No, those were the primary things during the pandemic because basically because of the restrictions. Yeah, right, right. right. And, and I, you know, I think that, you know, when things turn bad, and, you know, our show often focuses on all the great things we do in the Baton Rouge area. But the rural areas, such as uh, St. Francisville and others, you know, it's coming together and it's responding to need. And, and right. so the pandemic did uh, kind of uh, put us all in a challenge, but in reality, uh, the church was there. And, and that's, that's uh, I, you know, sitting before me are two men that uh, have been members of our faith for a long period of time. Since birth. <laughs> that's it. And, yeah. and, and, but that faith drives you, whether it's the Knights or the food pantry or working with other agencies that are not necessarily Catholic, like the Council on Aging. It's all about living our faith and taking action, right? That's correct. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the Knights are a great expression of that faith. And I'm a first degree Knight there at uh, St. Aloysius. But it's, it's something that um, it's important in, in today's world, right? It's bringing together a, a group of Catholic men to do more than we could do as an individual. Right. We do it as a group, whether it's fundraising, or whether it's expending those funds, whether it's bringing meals to to people who need meals, uh, coats for children, we've, we've done those kinds of things. Uh, uh, there's an e Even West Felicia Parish is a small parish. Yes. It still has great yes. needs. Yes, indeed. Just like any, uh, any, any lo location, any community in our state. So through the church, mm -hmm. we're able to bring resources together, whether or not they're members of the Knights, Right. We can we sponsor programs all the time that uh, from a 
faith perspective that um, involves uh, sponsoring a rosary. Right. Um, we sponsored a consecration to the Holy Family for the parish. Yes, sir. So we do, we do things like that as well. And um, anything that our pastor would need relative to his work in administering the parish, we're there for him. He knows that. We serve in all the ministries, yes. parish council, lectors, ushers. We, you know, we're part of the church. Yes. But we're able, as, uh, as this group of men, to fundraise, yes. uh, as you mentioned that word. Yeah. That's one of the things we're really good at. That's great. We just held our annual Knights of Columbus golf tournament. Great. It's, uh, How did that do? It was, it was amazingly successful. That is fantastic. We, ra we raised over $13,000 in that tournament, and that will be distributed Yes. To the various charities that we support. Right. Like the um, nursing home in, in St. Francisville. But it was amazing at the response to the tournament at this time of the year coming out of the pandemic. It just seemed like everybody wanted to get out and get out on a golf course. And have some fun. <laughs> and just huh? have some fun. But at the same time, they knew they were supporting a charity. Yes. So that yeah. was important. Well, you know, a lot of times in uh, bigger cities like Baton Rouge, for instance, there's a lot of federal funds, and those are very important. However, in the smaller parishes throughout the diocese, there's not a lot of federal money for right. charitable work. It's right. the Knights, it's St. Vincent de Paul, it's the church. They're the ones that are the main provider of funds for the food pantry, the nursing home support, all of those things, those federal funds aren't flowing to small cities. That's exactly and, that, right. and that's critical, isn't it, Craig? Absolutely. And especially the golf tournament this year because we couldn't have our fish fries because of the pandemic. We'll continue talking about the importance of the Knights of Columbus, the impact that they make, especially in the rural communities like St. Francisville when we come back in our next segment. For over 20 years, the St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy has served our area. We provide prescription medicines for those who have nowhere to turn for this most basic health care need. Please, if you need your medicine or you know a family member that needs their medicine, contact us. Kay, how can they get in touch? 383-7450. Give us a call today and spread the word so that we can ensure no one goes without their prescription medication. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul's first cookbook, Taste and See, is the gift which helps share the goodness of the Lord with those most in need. Featuring recipes from Chef John Foles, each chapter begins with a short story about one of our special work programs. To order your copy of Taste and See, please call the Society or visit our website. Help multiply blessings for the neediest in our community. The Knights of Columbus do so much good within our entire diocese. The Knights, their spirit, and their fraternal organization make such a difference in our area. And there's been some recent good news about the Knights. That's correct. There certainly has. Our founder, Father Michael J. McGinvey, was just raised to bless it. So we only got one more step, one more miracle, and we're going to be out at the top. Yep. and and. Uh, Father Michael had a really wonderful vision for the Knights. He wanted to do something really important. He did, because during those times, um, life expectancy, especially for males, was less than 40. In fact, Father McGivney died at 38. So he saw a desperate need for helping the widow and the family. Yes. At, at that time, there were a number of benevolent societies in, that were created to, to do similar things, but he, he wanted more than that. Right. He also wanted the, the ability, the opportunity to, to help men grow spiritually in the church. Right. 
So he formed the Knights of Columbus to do those two things. And through our insurance program, which has grown dramatically over the years, that allows the, uh, the family to continue to have the resources they need. In addition to that, as through our faith programs, we grow spiritually through involvement in the Knights of Columbus as well. And, and in today's world, that's really important, right, Craig? Uh, you turn on the TV, you see things that aren't really anything that really excites you, but when you think about your faith life and having Brother Knights to be a part of, it's important, isn't it, Craig? Just think about this for a minute. If you are surrounded by a group of people, especially men, that believe the same thing that you believe, right. and you are with them on a consistent basis, think about how that helps you stay close to the Lord. Yes. Think about how that continues to support you when you are surrounded by all of these other things that bombard you every day with things that are not about your faith, that actually are against your faith. Yes. And how that supports you. So the KCs not only do good things for the community, but they do good things for their members. Yes, indeed. Oh, it's such a wonderful thing. And whether you're like my father, Michael McGivney, passed away at 38, whether you're 38 or you're 80, it doesn't matter. That connection is important in our faith and spiritual growth, is it not? Totally. Yeah. Do you think that's what putting your faith into action, you know, when you see the difference you make at the food pantry, is that something that just charges up your faith life no matter what age you are. I think it helps you to realize why you're here. Yes. Why did God place you here? Is to help others. And that became so relevant to me through my involvement in the Knights of Columbus. And I can go back so many years, but right, right there in St. Francisville, we had a wonderful program when Father Charlie Landry was our pastor. And uh, we had uh, a program we instituted called a Children's Shopping Spree. Back in those days, we were able to take like 60 kids shopping at Walmart, provide them with so much funds. But that was such an eye-opening experience to help these children who otherwise would not have much of a Christmas, if any at all. But the beauty of that program, in addition to that, was the, was the members of our church, non Knights of Columbus, and in some cases, non-Catholic, who came together when they saw the beauty of that program, the benefit of that program, and the smiles on those kids' faces. It, it, it was just a wonderful faith-filled opportunity it, to, to, it, to be a shopping buddy and, 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 and work with those kids. Kind of reminds me of the picture right over here with uh, St. Vincent de Paul and St. Louise de Marlac. It, it's, it's about the children. You know, and, and I, at St. Vincent de Paul, we think of everyone we serve as a child of God. You don't have to be an infant. You don't have to be, uh, you know, a, a four or five year old to know that we're all children of God. And, but when you touch a child's life, it's powerful, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And, and it's eye opening. Uh, and, and I think that's what's so positive about the Knights is that no matter where, you know, Bishop Duca, you know, he'll tell you real quick, his go-to guys in the lay ministry, the Knights of Columbus and the St. Vincent de Paul Society, right. when he needs something. Right. And, and that's because y'all are there and y'all are making difference. And that's important, isn't it, Craig? Absolutely. It's one of the reasons I volunteered at St. Vincent de Paul. Right. Because you're stable. Yes. You're long-term. Yes. And you make it happen. Yes. And, and it, whether it's St. Vincent de Paul, and we'll get to that in the next segment, but whether it's St. Vincent de Paul or the Knights of Columbus, it's growing spiritually and having our eyes open, whether we're 38 or I'm almost 55 or whatever age, we can, we can learn, we can grow, and we can really put our faith into action. Isn't that true, Glenn? That's 
Absolutely true. That's what the Knights of Columbus is all about, I think, is putting in of, of faith in action, whether it's pro-life, whether it's family. We have a ministry at Angola, a uh, state penit uh, penitentiary. We, we um, minister to, to the men in the hospice program. That's right. The, and uh, we, we couldn't do it, obviously, last year, but it's in the plans to c continue doing that particular ministry. Right. And we minister so. to the students at LSU. Yeah, that's great. What do y'all do with that? Uh, we cook a jambalaya for them, for the kids, for the students, and they, it's amazing to watch those kids. Yeah. Oh, they just pile in there, and uh, we, we, we have kids that are no taller than you can imagine that eat plates of jambalaya this big, <laughs> and they sit there and yeah. watch those kids, and Michael, they come and thank you three times over. It's amazing. It's huh? amazing. Yeah. And, and to be able to promote the KCs and to get those kids to see what the KCs do. Yes. And to watch them think about our faith. Yes. By watching the KCs, it's amazing. Oh, I know it is amazing. And I, well, I, you know, in the first segment, um, you shared with me that the pandemic happened. It's the very scary time. But y'all didn't stop. Y'all continue, but that has to That's be right. your faith life feeding that, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, the need was still there, like like I have said before, maybe even greater. Yes. It's probably greater need. Yes. And uh, we weren't going to stand by and let, you know, an opportunity pass us by where people needed help. Yes. And at our church, during the, during the pandemic, this idea that I found from a fellow knight that was in our family. We, uh, we invited the parishioners to bring food to the church at mass, at all of the masses. And we, we would collect those food items and then deliver those to the, to the uh, food pantry in St. Francisville. Yes, sir. That became an amazing program. The response from the parish was amazing. Yes. We were hauling food quite a lot. <laughs> But in addition to that, we, we had, what, $1,100, I think about $1,100? $1, $1,200 in cash. In cash, yeah. cash donations. That's great. So we were able to do that during the pandemic when we returned to church in some fashion. It wasn't full capacity. But uh, our parishioners responded to us. Yes. And they recognized what we were trying to do. Well, courageous, that's what I call it, being active and living our faith during the pandemic. And that's what the Knights of Columbus are all about. But there's always a transformation in our spiritual lives. And when we come back, we'll talk about the transformation of seeing those who are in need in a different way. My Bicycle Journey, a book that tells a story. It educates, it promotes, and it also provides some leadership. Take the time to purchase this book and St. Vincent de Paul benefits from all of the proceeds of this book. Please, if you would, give St. Vincent de Paul a call and let me know what you think of my bicycle journey. Lisa, I want some more. More? Well, we did say please. And thank you. Please. And thank you. Pass it on. Thank you. St. Vincent de Paul and the Knights of Columbus are organizations that, at their very foundation, it's all about spiritual growth. And I know that the Knights have so much spiritual growth in all of the things that they do. Craig, you had a special experience with St. Vincent de Paul. Can you share that with I us? I certainly did, Michael. You know, my wife grew up poor, and I did not. And for years and years, she and I have had lots of discussions. And one of my attitudes has always been, uh, why do people stay poor? Why don't they grow out of that and, and get a job and, and, and do like other people do? And she kept telling me, you don't understand. And I said, well, how do I learn how to understand? I don't get it. And she said, go volunteer at St. Vincent de Paul. Go down to the 
to uh, to the uh, to them and, and visit with them. So I called up and I said, "Well, how can I do that?" And she said, "Well, I don't know." So I got a hold of Daisha and, and she said, "Come down and, and volunteer for Bags of Hope." I had no idea what it was. I said, "Fine, I'm going to go down." So I go down. And I find out about Bags of Hope and I find out it's this program to provide these lunches for these poor people that have to come and have something to eat. Right. So I go down, I start putting bags together, and I find out about all these other people, and I start asking about these people that are coming every day that have nothing to eat. Yes. And I start asking, how are these people, how are we helping these people, and what are they doing? And I began to learn that there isn't just this opportunity all of a sudden to be able to step out of this. Right and step up and get a job and get a house and, and be able to just come out. Right. And I'm thinking, wow, there's got to be, we got to help these people more. Right. And I'm starting to get excited about how do we get more people. So I came back to the Knights and I said, we got to get more guys involved in this. Oh, and all of a sudden, I'm getting wound up. <laughs> and glad to tell you, I came back to the council and I said, we yeah. got to get more guys to come down here to this Bags of Hope thing because we got to get more people helping these people. And yeah. Our, our council helped. And our council with, with involved the, uh, financially. We yeah. bought these mats bought for the, the mats, guys, yeah. the volunteers to stand on, because yeah. they're standing on this terribly hard floor. Yes, indeed. So it's exciting to find out your prejudices right. and get involved and say, oh, wait a minute, maybe it isn't like you see it. Right. If you talk about a faith opening, yes. I had an absolute wide open, wow, was I wrong. Yes. So you've got to keep yeah, your eyes yeah. open. You've got to understand where your prejudices are and let the Lord see, open your eyes and understand maybe you're going to be wrong. Maybe you can see something that's there that you can help with. Yeah, but being, a, and I 100% agree, and being in a part of an organization like Knights of Columbus allows you to be open to that. Absolutely, because your faith is there. Yep. Maybe your prejudice can be pushed away right. by your faith. And it, mine was. There's absolutely, you know, sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I say to myself, what lessons am I going to learn today? You and were. that day, you learned a lot about poverty. Boy, did and, I. And, and, and ever since, it's changed your life, your whole spiritual growth, right? Absolutely. And, yeah. and, but it would not have happened if that very foundation of the nights was not there. No, it would not have. Absolutely not. My wife would have said to me, that's the way it is, and you're never going to believe it. And I would have gone and said, have at it. Yeah. It's the way it is. Yeah. And uh, when we were off the air, we were talking a little bit about uh, the nights, not only from the charitable end, the spiritual growth end, but part of spiritual growth is social interaction. Right. And one of the things you right. said off camera is, we got to talk about the fish fries. It's a, <laughs> it's a St. Francisville kind of tradition now. It started off small. Tell us about it, Glenn. Yes. Michael, I brought that idea. I learned about it in Mandeville when I was part of that council. And there was a huge church parish. And we served a lot of fish dinners. So I brought that with me when we moved to St. Francisville, my wife and I. And uh, when we first began, if we served 50 meals on a Friday evening, we, were, we thought we were really doing something. Well, that's grown down to about 300 meals every Friday night during Lent. Yes, sir. And it grew from being solely a parish-oriented, a church parish-oriented yes. event into a community-wide, parish-wide event. Right. And it brings people from all walks of life in the parish and all different um, church communities right. together and it's become a social event, it's become a community event aside from the fact that we're raising money for charity. Right. So we, I have neighbors now, we, we began friend, become friends mm -hmm. doing a fish fry. We're now next door neighbors. <laughs> so that, that's a great outcome out of our fish fries. But we're known, I think, in the parish for the Knights are known for being, providing the fish fries. And we yes. were asked during the pandemic, when are you gonna come back? When are you gonna start again with the fish fries? Right. So we anxious to get started as, again as well. And one thing I wanna mention, 
along with what we do as knights, is our wives and our KC ladies, as we refer to them. Yes. Because everything we do in, in the nights relative to our charitable activities, they support us in everything we do, and we would, would not be as successful without them. I think that's a beautiful thing because I know that, uh, you know, without a strong marriage uh, and without the support of my wife, I mean, right. none of us can be successful. You mentioned, Greg, <laughs> you, your wife yeah. helped open your eyes. Absolutely. And, and, a, and it wasn't just the first time, Michael. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth, you know? Yeah. It's uh, like this morning, my wife was picking out my outfit early today and saying, this needs to go with this because often I go out the house and she says, you wore that, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But but you're right. Whether it's uh, the simple things in life or growing together in holiness in a marriage, that's what the knights kind of tell us we got to do, right? All the time and to each other. Yes, yes. Yeah. And that's a uh, that's one of those things you don't want to forget. If you're on a, uh, a television show and you don't mention your wife when she's behind you every day of the week, <laughs> and we're all in trouble, right? I made some points. So. Yeah, I you think did. we all did. did. I think we all kind of put some points on the board. Well, we've got about a minute and 30 seconds left in the show, and I, I guess my, my big uh, point to end the show would be, why is it important for men to consider joining the Knights of Columbus? I think it, from my perspective, it gives you so many opportunities to give back. Yes. Now, one of our, one of our biggest challenges is being able to recruit younger men yes. to take our place. I understand. To, to continue this, uh, this, this momentum we have, the, the, the good things that we do. And so, uh, that, I think just by the, the visible aspect of who we are and what we do in the church and in the community, in a, in a way, recruits young men to us. Right. And, and it's not just cooking or, you know, right. doing something like that, which we do well, but it's what we do for others. Yes. And, yeah. and, you know, and serve the needy. And Craig, I know you agree. The hardest part is to get young men to realize we just need a little bit of their time. It's not it's not a lifetime right now. Give us give us a little bit, join and come, and you can grow with us over time. And that's what it's all about. Whether it's the St. Vincent de Paul Society or the Knights of Columbus, it's all about growing spiritually. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. We'll see you again next week on Beacons of Life.